Church, uh, whether it be house church worship service, and uh, once again, Larry Phils will be leading it. Uh, and uh, we'll be, I guess, we'll be receiving some uh, music from the family again, and um, and we'll also be attempting to do communion t- today as well. So, this should be interesting. So, I will hand it over to you, Larry. Thank you for sharing your morning with us. Well, the blessing is here, as um, Brother Jerry would would say, and we've already, family here has already listened, I think, three of um, Mike McGinnis' messages already this morning. What a blessing Mike has been, and what a blessing it was to hear everyone yesterday in fellowship with Jerry. I thought that was just a really special time, and I'm hoping that we can eventually uh, do some of these, um, whether it be house church jointly with uh, Jerry and and Mike and from their churches, and we're planning a trip up to see Jerry, uh, and uh, I'm going to try to get it situated so that the sun, Sunday that we're up there, that we can broadcast to everybody so that you guys can be a part of it. Uh, the first. The the first song Mark has requested this morning, which I thought was really apropos, um, anyway, the first the first song that we're going to do, Mark has selected, and it's uh, 142, and it's called Gethsemane. It's taken from Matthew 26, 36, and I'll just read this quickly, because I always like I always like to know. You know what I'm, what I'm have people hear what we're singing. Uh, just singing, if you don't understand the words, it's not really, it's not really apropos. Many woes had Christ endured, many sore temptations met, patient and to pains inured, but the sorest trial yet was to be sustained in thee gloomy, sad Gethsemane. There my God bore all my guilt. This through grace can be believed, but the torments which he felt are too vast to be conceived. None can penetrate through the the doleful dark Gethsemane. All my sins against my God, all my sins against his laws, all my sins against his blood, all my sins against his cause. Sins as boundless as the sea, hide me, O Gethsemane. Hear my claim, and here alone none a Savior more can need. Deeds of righteousness I've none, not a work that I can plead, not a glimpse of hope for me only in Gethsemane. Now I'm going to be taking off this mic and using it for an open mic, so bear with me for one Oh, more than one second, about five, ten seconds. Here's my claim, a hero alone, 
Lord and Savior, more can me. Deeds of righteousness I learn, by a work that I can plead. Not a glimpse of hope for me, only in Gethsemane. Okay, the next one we're going to do is from the Psalms. <clears throat> Psalms taken from Psalm 86, and uh, Rosette has selected this. Um, it says, Thy way teach me, Lord, I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart, thy name to fear. My Lord and my God, with my whole heart I'll praise. And, and ever, ever thy name will revere. <clears throat> Thy way, teach me, Lord, I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart, thy name to fear. My Lord and my God, with my whole heart of praise. And ever thy name will revere. For great are thy love and thy kindness to me. My soul from hell thou wast raised, the proud and the vile and seek for my life, forgetful of me and my grace. For thou, Lord, art merciful, gracious thou art, abundant in truth and in love. Turn thou unto me, thy rich grace now bestow. Thy servant makes strong from above. The Son of thy hand may redeem by thy grace. A token for good show thou me, that all those who hate me may see and be shamed. My help, thy strength, are in thee. Okay, that's um, all we're going to sing. We're going to sing another song at the end of this. Um, and it's uh, quite a song. The first time I heard it, it's called When Thou My Righteous Judge. And um, I'll, uh, I'll read that to you at the end. And uh, Just checking with Mike before we start. Mike, does the sound coming through okay today? Okay. Sorry, sorry for the delay there. Yes, it's right now. It sounds great. Sounds All right, right now. good, good. All right. Um, today we're going to be talking about, uh, it, you know, like we all have talked many times on this program, program format, <laughs> fellowship, whatever you want to call it. Um, we have talked about. Christ. And today we're going to be talking about the righteousness of Christ. You know, there, there's no righteousness in and of ourselves. And I know that everybody on this call um, totally understands, I mean, you know, believes that because we look at ourselves and we sort of see our our proneness to sin and our our depravity and our rebellion against God and against his his word and so on and um you know that is why Christ came because we needed a perfect sacrifice we cannot look to anything in and of ourselves and the moment we do we're actually attacking the perfect sacrifice of Christ and putting ourselves on the throne so I'm going to look at some verses today you know Righteousness, the word righteousness is found 307 times in the Bible. And of that 307 times, over half the time is referring to Christ's righteousness. It starts as early as in Genesis when it says in Genesis 15:6, And he believed in the Lord, and it counted it to him for righteousness. You know, our faith does not come from ourselves. We've talked about that many, many times, that he's the author and the finisher of our faith. And we know that Abraham uh, was given the faith. 
uh, to believe in the Lord. <laughs> and so his faith to believe in the Lord was a gift. And God counted the faith that he gave him, he counted it to him for righteousness. So it's uh, the faith was all of God and the righteousness was all of God. And, uh, you know, that's quite a quite a uh, accomplishment for the creator to give not only the faith to his his created beings to believe in him but then turn around and count him righteous because of it and because of his faith in the lord um now you know in psalms there's many many instances referring to the righteousness of christ you know and uh, Psalm 717, it says, I will praise the Lord. You're going to hear a little uh, a little background noise. We have the door open this morning, and we have a highway in front of our house. And uh, the little uh, the, the sports people on the weekends love to fly around these mountains on their motorcycles. It's, a, it's their entertainment for the weekend. Psalm 717, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness. And we'll sing praise to the Lord, praise to the name of the Lord Most High. And, um, you know, I remember the first time I I heard a a message on the imputed righteousness of Christ. And it was absolutely mind-boggling. Like I've shared with you all many times, I um, have been amazed through the years uh, that... way I was brought up, you know, the the favorite song that was sung in the Armenian circles was Holiness unto the Lord is his watchword and song. Holiness unto the Lord as we're marching along. Sing it, shout it all day long, you know. But they weren't speaking of the holiness of Christ. They were speaking of the holiness of man. You know, and so there's uh you can't have any holiness in man. We're all as filthy rags. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. You know, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And in us dwelleth no good thing. (laughs) Okay. Now in Psalm 22, 31, it says, They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto people that shall be born, that he hath done this. (laughs) You know, the psalmist David is actually prophesying in advance that Christ would come and his his righteousness would be declared uh, unto a people that uh, weren't even born at that time, that shall be born. And those people were going to declare that he's done it. (laughs) Okay, he's done it. And, of course, in Psalm 24, 5, we see he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Again, if we have any righteousness, you know, what is righteousness? A right standing before God. The only way we can have any right standing before God is trusting in the merits of his Son. And here we're told that uh, the blessing from the Lord and righteousness is from God of his salvation. And... uh, you know, we go on down to Psalm thirty-five, twenty-four. It says, "Judge me, O Lord, my God, according to Thy righteousness, <laughs> and let them not rejoice over me." Now, you've often thought about how that David so many times has prayed that way. You know, not according to my righteousness, but according to Thy righteousness, O Lord. He says in the 28th verse, My tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. He says in Psalm 36, 6, Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are a great deep, O Lord. Thou preservest man and beast. 36, 10, O continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee and thy righteousness to the upright of heart. Notice that the focus is not on the righteousness of man. The focus is on Jesus Christ. And by the way, you can't separate out Jesus Christ from his righteousness. (laughs) 
He is our righteousness. You know, in Psalm 49, 40, verse 9, I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained, refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. Next verse, I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. And um, verse 10 of Psalm 48 says, According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. And, of course, we know any time that is referring to his right hand is referring to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He says, uh, Psalm 50, verse 6, The heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself, Selah. And, uh, you know, we can go on down through these psalms. You'll find, and you may want to do that sometime, do a word study on righteousness, and you'll find that many, many verses here are proclaiming the righteousness of Christ. And he says in verse Psalm 71, verse 16, I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even of thine only. <laughs> so he's uh, he's making an exclusive uh, to Jesus Christ and his righteousness. You know, we also see many times in the scripture where it says he was without sin. And even though he became our sin bearer, uh, he was our righteousness. Psalm seventy-one, nineteen: Thy righteousness also, God, is very high. Who has done great things of God? Who is like unto thee? Verse 24, my tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness all the day long, for they are confounded, for they are brought unto shame. They seek my hurt. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, you know, I, 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 I'm amazed at how many people uh, don't understand that in and of ourselves, we cannot be righteous. We have the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ in Psalm 85:10 it says mercy and truth are met together righteousness and peace have kissed each other <laughs> think about that one mercy and truth are met together righteousness and peace have kissed each other next verse says truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven Righteousness, verse 13, shall go before him and shall set us the way of his steps. And um, then in 89, 16, it says, In thy name shall they rejoice all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. Psalm 92, 15, To show that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. <clears throat> you know, when it talks about Christ coming into the world with righteousness, um, it's it often alludes to Christ coming into the world with his righteous judgments or with his righteousness. Psalm ninety six thirteen says, Before the Lord before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, he shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Psalm 97, 2, clouds and darkness are around about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Verse 6, the heavens declare his righteousness and all the people see his glory. There's another uh, scripture that says, you know, that he will not share his glory with another. Uh, Psalm 98, 2, the Lord hath made known his salvation. His righteousness hath he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. <laughs> we talked about the heathen yesterday. And, you know, how can the heathen ever, you know, see 
Christ, well, he says that he's made known his salvation and his righteousness hath he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. And, uh, you know, there's also a uh, many passages that refer to the fact that Jesus Christ has a special place in his heart for those who are cast down, and he often refers to them as um, as the poor or as the needy or as the oppressed. Psalm 103, 6 says, The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. If you're feeling oppressed this morning... The Lord's going to execute judgment, righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. And uh, in verse 17 of that same psalm, it says, The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. There is a, uh, there is a, um, co- a correlation between uh, those that have the fear of the Lord and those who have been extended his righteousness. And uh, going down to verse 31 of that psalm, and, and that was counted unto him for righteousness to all generations forevermore. Speaking of kin of faith that was given to him. And uh, Psalm 111.3, his work is honorable and glorious and his righteousness endureth forever. Well, he says in verse one twelve nine, he hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness endureth forever, his horn shall be exalted with honor. Any time it speaks of his horn, of course, we know that's speaking of Jesus Christ. Psalm one eighteen, nineteen, open to me the gates of righteousness, I will go un into them, I will praise the Lord. One nineteen forty. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me in thy righteousness. Anytime we see the word quicken, it means that uh, he's wanting a to be uh, re, have a rebirth experience. In other words, recognizing without the quickening of the Holy Spirit, he's going to remain in, dead in his trespasses and sin. 119, verse 123, Mine eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. Psalm 119, 142, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding, and I shall live. That's uh, verse 144 of that passage. You know, and so as we read through these passages, why do you think that uh, it was foreordained that God would uh, put so much emphasis on his righteousness, his righteousness? Psalm 132, 9, let thy priests be clothed with righteousness and let thy saints shout for for joy. What does that mean? Well, we're clothed. In the, again, that's pointing to the imputation. That's pointing to the imputed righteousness. The priests weren't clothed with their own righteousness. So let let thy be, priests be clothed with righteousness from him. You know, Psalm 143, uh, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplication in thy faithfulness. Answer me in thy righteousness. Quicken me, O Lord. For thy name's sake, verse 11, for thy righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. <clears throat> and I, I could go on and on with this. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it's all the way through the New Test, Old Testament. Uh, we're going to look at a few passages um, in the New Testament here in a minute. But, uh, I mean, there's probably at least a hundred passages in the Old Testament alone referring to the righteousness of Christ. And, you know, in in Isaiah, the 11th chapter, by the way, Isaiah is full of this theme. 
Isaiah 11, 5, and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness are the girdle of his reins. And uh, Isaiah 16, 5, and in mercy shall the throne be established, and he shall sit upon it in truth in the tabernacle of, of David, judging and seeking judgment and hasting righteousness. Um, you know, why wasn't this uh, concept of righteousness referring to Christ's perfect sacrifice? Why wasn't that taught to us as little children? Why were we not taught the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ as children? You know, why were we taught that, you know, that it was basically our own works that saved us? I remember as a small child, you know, um, we used to sing all these songs that were all works-based, you know. We all pull together, pull together, pull together. You know, when, then we all fight each other, fight each other, you know. In other words, it's it's up to us to determine whether we're going to be good or bad. I mean, you know, back to the Santa Claus syndrome, you know. Maybe that's why I didn't like Santa, Walt. <laughs> but, you know, you know, Santa Claus is watching you, you know. Um, he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. <laughs> Be good for goodness sake. Isaiah 42, 21, the Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Isaiah 45, 8, drop down ye heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open and let them bring forth salvation and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. <laughs> Thirteen, I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his ways. You know, and uh, I don't know how many passages that I've I've found uh, speaking of Christ's righteousness in in the book of Isaiah. You know, in, in fifty one five, he says, "My righteousness near, my salvation is gone forth, and my arm shall judge the people. The isles shall wait upon me, and on mine arm shall they trust." Again, uh, referring to Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, I, as I was going through this study, I found 11 pages on the righteousness uh, referred to in the Bible. And, uh, and yet, here we are, uh, all of us at least close to a half a century year old, years old, and we are... Uh, all of us discovered pretty much later in our lives what this righteousness was all about. You know, in Isaiah fifty four seventeen, no we weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. <clears throat> and, of course, uh, you know, we can go on into Jeremiah. We see the same theme through Jeremiah, you know. And uh, in Jeremiah 23, 6, it says, In his d days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is his name. Thereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. And notice there, if you're following along with me, Jeremiah 23, 6, that righteousness is all capitalized. <laughs> In fact, the whole phrase, the Lord our righteousness, is all capitalized. In, in Jeremiah 33, verse 15, it says, In those days and that time I will cause the branch, <laughs> that's referring to Christ, the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. And then again, the same theme is in uh, the 16th verse. In those days shall Judah be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name wherewith she shall be called, the Lord our righteousness. <laughs> you know. And so anyway, I, I really don't think that we can uh, spend too much time focusing on this. I mean, um, so many 
so many years we've we've thought about how can we be good, you know. Um, you know, we hear the commandment, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and love thy neighbor as yourself. But how can we love the Lord our God with all our heart if you're not if we're not attributing to him all of the righteousness that's due him? And uh you know that's in the, in the book of Daniel. Uh, Daniel is amazing. I mean, if you ever get a chance to study Daniel's prayer, uh, it's pretty amazing. Some of his prayers. But anyway, um, in Daniel nine seven, he says, "O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto Thee." But unto us, confusion of faces. As at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off <laughs> through all the countries for that thou hast driven them because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. Notice how he starts that. that he starts it out by saying, O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee. The 16th verse, he says, O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee. You know. And then he shows the contrast in verse 19. In the end, he says, We do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. And uh, we see the 70-week prophecy in the 24th verse there. He says, um, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make a reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness. <clears throat> and, um, you know, it's uh, um, it's just uh, amazing to me how many times that the prophets, both the major and the minor prophets, are referred to this same theme. In Micah 7, 9, it says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. And, um, well, I uh, I think that, you know, we need to continually uphold Christ and him crucified and his perfect sacrifice, you know. And um, in Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, chapter 3, he says, He shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. And uh, chapter 4, verse 2, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And we heard Jerry yesterday talk about, you know, the account of Christ's baptism. And uh, I had never heard it put quite like that, you know, where he says in, Matthew 3.15, and Jesus answering, saith unto him, you know, speaking of, to John the Baptist, who said, I have needs for you to baptize me. Jesus Christ answered and said unto him, Suffer it be so now, for thus it becometh us to feel, fulfill all righteousness. So then he suffered him. And so, you know, we may not fully understand all of these things. Um, but, you know, we we do have the imputed righteousness of Christ moving forward. I mean, we find in the sixth chapter there, in the 33rd verse, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, you know. And, um, but... Christ's ministry 
was in perfect holiness and righteousness all of his days. In Luke 1, 7, D5, he says, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. You know, uh, Christ never, uh, his whole uh, three and a half years of ministry, uh, he never, ever succumbed to sin, for he was without sin, you know. He knew no sin. <laughs> he was perfect and holy and just and and righteous and and uh, you know. In, in John sixteen ten, he says, "Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you see me no more." And uh, you know the uh, Book of Romans is so so strong on this. Um, in Romans one seventeen, it says, "Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith." But notice that it starts with the righteousness, and it starts with the righteousness being revealed by God. You know, and uh, you know. Um, in Romans 3.22, it says, Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. <laughs> so it's a package deal, in other words. The righteousness of God, which is by the faith of Jesus Christ. The 25th verse, it says, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. And uh, he says in the next verse, to, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. You know, and we see the same theme, theme in the next chapter. The third verse says, For what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Romans 4, 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him, that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. And notice he says, It's to him that worketh not. <laughs> it's not a works, lest any man should boast. You know, and, and we see this... Um, Imputed righteousness in Romans 4, 6. It says, Cometh this blessing of them on the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. <laughs> and he says, uh, that was 4, 9, and 4, 6. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. So, when we are around people that are, you know, talking about works, 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 you know, do this, do that, um, you know, you, our our antennas should go up. I used to be a um, a lot more into works. I'm kind of become, you know, I'm not against good works, but if that's where our focus is lying, then we have been we have swerved off the way. And we've been turned into vain jangling, it says in Timothy. By the way, the word, the word swerved is in the King James Version of the Bible. You might want to look that up, swerved. <laughs> swerved off the way, you know. And uh, anyway, in, in Romans 4.13, he says, For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Verse 22, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. And I uh, I am getting to the end. I hope I'm not being too redundant and putting everybody to sleep here. But I think this is a good study. I, you know, I, uh, I'm i not much of an orator. <laughs> you know, I, I don't believe in getting up and scream me, scream me, you know, all of that stuff, emotional stuff. I just believe in, you know, studying the Bible, you know. And uh, I think it's uh, I think it's good. You know, he says in Romans eight four that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Verse ten, and if Christ be in you, 
The body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. And, uh, of course, one of my favorite chapters in the whole Bible, Romans 9, he says in 9.28, For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon on the earth. Uh, verse uh, 30 and 31 what shall we say then, that the Gentiles which follow not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. So we see the contrast between those who are trying to you know, get people to go back under the whole law service and those who are in Christ. You know, he says in Romans 10.4, Christ is the end of the law. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is the law, that the man which doeth these things shall live by them. But <laughs> the righteousness which is of faith speaketh, not on, speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That's to bring Christ down from above. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And, uh, of course, uh, in 1 Corinthians 1.30, uh, there's a tremendous short little verse. It says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. <laughs> oh, wow. That's pretty pretty powerful. I'm going to read that again. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says... He hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And uh, so anyway, I think uh, we're going to conclude that. Again, there's there's so many other passages. I, I just barely touched the surface today. Um, but I see we're coming up on an hour. Now, the, the last part of this service... Um, we're going to do communion, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to listen to a portion of, if I can pull this off, <laughs> we're going to listen to a portion of the uh, communion service out there in um, O'Brien, Florida with Mike McGinnis at Grace Chapel, So, um, and you can just follow along and then uh, I would encourage you when he goes through uh, talking about taking of the wine and the bread that uh, you take communion and that we are told to examine ourselves that we do not eat or drink unworthily of the table, meaning that we should, you know, go to our Lord and, uh, you know, uh, confess all known sins to him. He's our mediator. He's the only mediator between God and man. We don't need a priest. We don't need a uh, someone else to absolve our sins. He is our sin bearer. So, and he has, by the way, he's already uh, completed all the work on the cross. He said, "To finish, this is a memorial. It's looking back to Christ and uh, giving him honor and glory for what he's already accomplished for us." So, let's take a listen. If I can uh, get this up. once again to do something that we are commanded to do in the scriptures. It's not an optional thing, but it's something that the Lord Jesus delivered to his disciples and he said, do this in remembrance of me. Over in the first First in First Corinthians in chapter eleven, Paul says this: For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, 
Now, that was the reason that the Lord gave the truth that he gave to Paul was so that he might have it to give to uh, the saints. Uh, That's the reason the Lord gives men spiritual gifts is for the benefit of the body. The Lord doesn't give men spiritual gifts for their own sake. But he gives them to men so that they might benefit the body. Now, quite often men think that they are uh, that that they've been given spiritual gifts and they consume it upon themselves. They say, "Well, this is for my benefit." No, the according to Scripture says, "The Lord has given to every man these gifts to profit the whole. The body." Uh, is to be profited by those gifts that the Spirit of God gives. And so it is uh, by that that the Lord is pleased to give to his people such things as he would have them to have. And so Paul said, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death, Till he come. Okay, I hope you can still hear me. Um, yes, we can. Okay. Now, the last uh, song we're going to sing is from the old school hymnal called When Thou My Righteous Judge. Okay. We talked about his righteousness. There's only one judge that we have. And by the way, um, we are not going to be judged again because we've already been judged. You know, we all will give an account at the judgment seat of Christ, but we know what our account is. You know, the judge and the jury has already decided our verdict. And it's not guilty because of Christ. And so this is what this is about. I'm going to read this quickly. When thou, my righteous judge, shall come to fetch thy ransom people home, shall I among them stand? Shall such a worthless worm as I, who sometimes am afraid to die, be found at thy right hand? I love to meet among them now before thy gracious feet to bow, the vilest of them all. But can I bear the piercing thought, what if my name shall be left out? When thou for them shall call, prevent, prevent it by thy grace. Be thou, dear Lord, my hiding place in this accepted day. Thy pardoning voice, oh, let me hear to still my unbelieving fear. And grant me faith, I pray. Let me among thy saints be found, whene'er the archangel's trump shall sound, to see thy smiling face. Then loud among the crowd I'd sing, while heaven's resounding mansions ring, with shouts of sovereign grace. So we're going to sing that, and then I'm going to, um, why don't we have a uh, just a, brief word of prayer before we can we do that father we thank you for your righteousness your perfect holiness perfect sacrifice and we're thankful for the faith that you've given us to believe that it has accomplished all things for us we thank you that you are a righteous judge we thank you for this time of remembering what you've done for us and may all glory and honor be to your name Okay, here we we're going to give this a try here. Hold on. Okay, let's start that. When thou my right. 
Bitches just shall come to bed by ransom people home to bed by ransom people home shall I above them stand shall such a worthless worm as I who sometimes am afraid to die who sometimes am afraid to die he found at thy right hand I love to meet among them now before thy gracious be to bow. Before thy gracious be to bow, the vilest of them all. But can I bear the piercing thought? What if my name shall be left out? What if my name shall be left out when thou for them shall call? Prevent, prevent it by thy grace. Be thou, dear Lord, my hiding place. Be thou, dear Lord, my hiding place in this accepted day. Thy parting voice, so let me hear to still my unbelieving fear. To still my unbelieving fear and grant me faith, I pray. Let me among thy saints be found where your angels' trump shall sound. Where your angels' trump shall sound to see thy smiling face. Then loud among the crowd I'd sing while heaven's resounding mansions ring. While heaven's resounding mansions ring with shouts of sovereign praise. Okay, brother. Mike. Okay. Well, thank you for uh, sharing this uh, morning in the service. and uh, Well, thank you for sharing, being with us, and everybody that's on the, everybody that's with us. We, we, uh, where two or three are gathered together, we're, there he is in the midst of us. And uh, I would like to get more involvement. You know, I was thinking about this. Maybe we could sometime do a whether it be house, church, kind of a fellowship with everybody. And, uh, where, you know, because I'm trying to figure out how to do this where, where my, my son and my, my wife can be involved and listen. Well, you know, they, we always go back and listen to the archives, but there's something about being present while it's actively happening. See, I can't, play an external mic as you know because it does feedback so maybe we can talk about that later how we can accomplish that sure okay well let's end the recording now uh